Hello guys, welcome to another video. Today we are going to do the paper 2-2 of October, November 2017. Okay, let's move on to question number one. Here we have, Sama buys a new car. The cash price of the car is this much. Now, she can pay for the car using option A or option B. As you can see, we have two options here. Now, question is, which option is cheaper and by how much? So let's find out. Option A, it will be paying one fifth of the price. Price is four five zero zero plus twelve monthly monthly payments, so twelve times three forty. So how much is that? Let's use our calculator. So one over five times four five zero zero plus twelve times three forty. That will be four nine. 80. Now let's go to option uh, B. Pays 12% in cash, so 12%, 12 over 100. That will be this much in cash, and then plus 24 months of 195. This will be how much? Let's find out. So 12%, 12 divided by 100 times 4500 plus 24 times. 195 that will be 5220 so which option will be cheaper option a will be cheaper by how much it will be 5220 minus 4980 for the difference minus 4980 that will be 240 so that is your answer part a now part b Sarah uses 5.2 liters of petrol for each 1 km she drives. So 5.2 liters for 100 km. Now, it says the petrol costs 0 0.5 per liter. So cost is 0 0.85 per 1 liter. Now, she drives 240 km. Calculate the cost of petrol she used for this journey to the nearest cent, that is nearest two decimal place. So let's find out. If she drives 240, how much she will use? So if she drives 100K, she will use 5.2 liters. So 240, she will use 5.2 divided by 100 times 240. So 5.2 divided by 100 times 240, that will be 12.48 uh, liters. Now the cost of one liter is this much. The cost of this liter will be times 0 0.85, which will be what? So times 0 0.85, that will be 10, so 10.608. So correct nearest cent, two decimal place, it will be 10.61. This will be your answer for part B of question number one. Now question number one, part C, we have Sarah pays a total of this much for her insurance. This total is made up of a basic charge plus tax. Find the amount of sales tax she pays. So this represents 115% represents this cost. How much does the normal price represent? Let's find out. That will be 322 divided by 015 times 100. That will be 280. So the extra is tax, so you do 322 minus 280 will be 42. So $42 will be tax. So otherwise, you could also do this. You know, this is 115 represents. 332, sorry, 322. So tax is 15%. You will say 15% represents 322 divided by 115 times 15. It should give you the same answer. That will be 42 for part C of question one. Moving on to question number two. A company asked their employees how long they took to travel to work in one day. The table summarizes the times for 120 employees. Now, these are the groups as you can see from 0 to 100 
and this is the frequencies which is in total 120. Now, uh, question part A, complete the cumulative frequency table below. So this one, less than 0 will be 0, this one will be 12, this one will be 12 plus 28, that will be 40, 40 plus 45, that will be 95, 95 plus 22, so 95 plus 22, that will be 117. I must have made a mistake somewhere. So this will be 12. 12 plus 12 plus 28 will be 40. Oh, here you go. This is the mistake. That should be 85. This is 107. Okay, that is one. Now part two. On the grid, draw a smooth cumulative frequency curve. So this will be y, and this is x. So zero zero. That's the first point. 0, 0. Point 0.2 will be 20, 12. 20, 12 should be here. And we have 40, 40. So 40, 40 will be here. We have 60, 85. So 60, 85 will be in between here. And we have 80, 107. 80, 107 will be this is um, 102, 104, 106, 107 will be here. And the last one is 100, 120. So 100 is the last one, 120 will be this one. Okay, so let's use a different color to join the curve together. This, the shape will always be like this. So let's try our best to make it smooth. So. This will go to this point. Okay, let's make it smooth as possible. Okay. Okay. I think you can do a better job. It should be smooth like this. So this is a bit not too smooth, but you get the idea of how the curve should be. It needs to meet all the points of the curve. That is question number two. On to, to question part B of number two. So use your curve to estimate the median time. So we have 120 people, so half of 120, that will be the 60th element. So let's find that on our graph. So let's find the 60th element, it will be here. So let's use a uh, different color. So 60 will be on a straight line. And then this will be cutting at this point. So for me, I get um, this will be about 52. So my value here will be 52 minutes for the median time. Now for the range, you have to find Q3 minus Q1. Q3 is 3 quarter of 120, which is the 90th element. Q1 is 1 quarter of 120 which is the 30th element. So let's find that using the graph. So where's the 90th element? It will be on this line. Okay, let's cut the graph and I think it should be on this one, I made a mistake, it went to this side, but it should be this one, which is 64, and the 30th will be this line. It will be about here, which is the line, the point 34. So 64 minus 34 will be your range. So 64 minus 34, that will be 30. That's your range for your interquartile range. Now, part C, calculate and estimate for the mean time taken for the employees to travel to work. So for the mean estimate, you have to use your table. You have to find the midpoint here. Let's call it X. The midpoint of this group will be 10. This will be 30, 50, 70, and 90. 
So you have to find the sum. And how do you do that? So you have to do 10 times 12 plus 30 times 28 plus 50 times 45 70 times 22 plus 90 times 13 and then all this divided by 120 because we have 120 people in total so now let's use our calculator so 10 times 12 plus 30 28 plus 50 times 45 plus 70 times 22 plus 90 times 13 divided by 120 that will be 49.3 your answer will be 49.3 minutes that will be the last part of question number two moving on to question number three Anya makes t-shirts. The matrix M shows the number of t-shirts of different types she makes in one week. So we have a men and women t-shirt. This is the size of the t-shirts. That's the M matrix. Now part A. Anya sells all t-shirts to a shop. She charges $5 for each small t-shirt, 6 for medium, and 8 for large. Represent N. Represent this amount in a 3 by 1 column matrix of N. So N should be the cost of this one. So it will be, the first one is a small, which is 5. And the second one, which is 6. And last one will be 8. Or last check. This will be your answer for N. Now work out the matrix P, which is M times N. Let's find out. M is this. 10, 20, 25, 40, 30, and 25 times this matrix, which is 5, 8, 5, 6, 8. It is always row times column. So 10 times 5 is 50, plus 25 times 6. 25 times 6, that will be 150, plus 30 times 8 will be 240. Now this one, 20 times 5 will be 100, plus 240, plus 25 times 8, that will be 200. Simplify, you have 50 plus 150, plus 240, you have 440, and 100 plus 240, plus 200, that will be 540. This is the matrix P, which is 400, no, 440, and 540. Now, part two. Explain what this, the elements of the matrix P represents. So as you can see here, M is a cost here for the men's shirt. Sorry, um, it's a number of shirt for the men's. This is number for women, and this is the cost. So it means that this is the men, this is women. So it, it represents the total price of men's and women's shirt respectively. That's it for part two. Now part C, the shopkeeper sells all size of men's shirts at $10 each. He sells all size of women's t-shirt at $9.50 each. So work out this matrix. So that will be a row by column. So 10 times 10 plus 9.5 times 20, let's find out. So the first one will be 10 times 10 plus 9.5 times 20. That will be 290. Next one will be 10, 10 times 25 plus 9.5 times 40, 630. And last one will be 10 times 30 plus 9.5 
times 25. That will be 37.50. That is your matrix for part one. Now, this one, work out the percentage profit the shopkeeper makes when he sells all the t-shirts. So what is the percentage? So first we have to find the costs. As you can see here, the usual cost for a t-shirt. So what is the cost here? Cost is on this table here, as you can see, five, six, and eight. So let's find out the profit he makes when he sells all the t-shirts. So let's find this new matrix. So his cost matrix will be five, six, So this is only two sizes of t-shirts. He sells the men t-shirt at this and the women's t-shirt at this price. So you have to add everything up to find the total price. I mean total of everything he sells. So let's find out how much he sells in total. So he will sell 290 plus this plus 550 so he would sell this much in total because now we are not looking at men and women we're looking at all the shares together so we have to add everything up to find how much money he makes selling all of these t-shirts now we have to find the percentage profit we have to minus the cost the cost will be on our previous um, matrix will be these two together that will be 440 plus 540 that's the cost which is 980 now let's find the profit will be 1457.5 minus 980 profit is this much but the question is to find the percentage profit that will be this much divided by cost which is 980 times 100 that will be 48.7 percent will be his profit that is question number three Moving on to question number four, part A. So here we have triangle A is given to us on the diagram. Part one, triangle A is mapped onto triangle B by a translation of seven minus five. So very easy, seven minus five. So at this point, seven minus five will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Minus five will be down. One, two, three, four, five. Will be this point. And this one will be, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 5 will be this one. And this one? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 will be this one. So joining everything together, we will have triangle B. This will be this side, joining this one, and this one. Then this will become triangle B. That is part A done. Now part two, triangle A is mapped onto triangle C by enlargement with scale factor of minus two, center minus one, two. Center minus one, two will be here. That's the center. And we have to draw the triangle A with an enlargement of scale factor two. So first step, let's label all the points. This is point A point B and point C. So how do you move from center to point A? You have to move one to the left and one to the bottom. So that will be, say point A, you have to move one left and one bottom. Half the times minus two. Why minus two? Because scale factor is minus two. That's why. So you get this new point, which is A prime for the image of A. That's the first step. And now for point B, you have to move one, two, and one bottom. So point B, minus two and minus one, times minus two becomes four and two. That will be B prime. And the last one is point C, you have to move one, two, and one, two. So C, minus two, and two, times minus two, 
that will be 4n minus 4 or point C prime. So now let's plot the points for 2, 2 from this point will be 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, that's the new point. And then this one will be 4, 2, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2 will be this point. And this one will be 4 minus 4, so let's find 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4 will be this point. So let's join them together to find the triangle C. So this is the enlargement of scale factor. This is triangle C. Okay, so now moving on to uh, part B. It says triangle P is shown in this diagram. This is P. Now, the stretch S is represented by the matrix 3, 0, 0, 1. So we say triangle P is mapped onto triangle Q by the stretch Q. So let's draw and label the triangle um, Q. So we know that matrix times object equal to image. Matrix is 3, 0, 0, 1. What is object? So the points, this one is 1, 1. This one is 3, 1. And this one will be 2, 3. So let's do that and find the points of triangle Q. So 3 times 3 will be? Three, be uh, nine and six. This will be a zero, one, one, three. This will be the points of triangle Q. So first one is three, three, no, three, one. So three, one will be here. That's the first point. Uh, nine, one will be the other point. And the last one will be six, three. So six, three will be. So let's join all the points to form the triangle Q. And the last one will be on this line. That is triangle Q. Now part S, so part two, uh, two, describe fully the stretch. As you can see, it is stressed in this direction. So it will be, it is a stretch with scale factor as you can see this is 3 3 so it will be scale factor 3 with y axis as the invariant line okay. so you have to need you need to have this and this to get the two marks this way this will be part b of question number 4 Moving on to question number five, express this as a single fraction in its lowest term. So one thing we can do here, as you can see, the base are different. We have to find the LCM. So multiply with each other. You have this. And then you cross multiply, you will have four times this one minus five times x minus two. Now we can just expand. We have four x plus four minus five x plus ten. Now we have x minus 2 x plus 1 so this will be 14 minus x divided by x minus 2 and x plus 1 so this will be your answer for part a now part b solve this equation so the first thing to do is to expand the brackets so we have 2x squared plus 2x equal to uh, 12 minus 3x so we send this over here we have 2x squared plus 5x minus 12 equal to 0 so factorize 2x times x 12 has factors as we have 1 times 12 2 times 6 or you can have 3 times 4 so for you to get plus 5 what can you use can use this one so 2 times 4 plus 4 that will be 8 minus 3 that will be 5 so equate x will be 3 over 2 x will be minus 4 so two answers will be x can be minus 4 or can be 3 over 2 that will be part b 
Moving on to uh, part C. Anil and Yasmin buy some pens and notebooks from the same shop. Anil buys three pens and two notebooks for this much. Yasmin buy five pens and four books for this one. So what can we do here? We can name let pens equal to x and notebooks equal to y. So here you can see Anil will be three pens plus two notebooks equal to 4.80 and here we have five pens plus four notebook equal to nine zero that's your two equations and this is your one mark now solve this equation to find the cost of the pen and cost of the notebook so find the value of x and y so the one thing i can do is i can make 2y subject of formula becomes 4.8 minus 3y now we have 5x plus what is 4y? 4y is 2 times 2y equal to 9. 2y is this. So 5x plus 2y will be 4.8 minus 3y equal to 9. Now let's expand. We have 5x plus what is 4.8 times 2? That will be 9.6 minus 6x equal to 9. So this minus this will be minus x. And here will be 9 minus 9.6 will be 0. Point, minus 0. 0.6. So x will be 0. 0.6. And the value of y will be, so first we have 2y equal to 4.8 minus 3 times 0. 0.6. So 2y will be 4.8 minus 1.8. So 2y will be equal to 3 dollars y is 1.5 so your answer cost of pen will be x which is 0 0.6 and this one will be 1.5 this will be part c and that will be question number five moving on to question number six part a so this is the universal set is an integer between 10 and 20 so we can write this out let's write it out so it will be 10 11 12 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. That will be the set of universal set. Now, A will be odd number. That will be 11, 13, 15, 17, and 19. Now, B will be multiple of 5. It will be 10, 15, and 20. Now, Part 1, find the number of A intersection B. So what is both in A and B? So there's only one match, which is 15. So the number will be 1. Now, what is the set of A dash, A prime union B? So let's first find what is in A prime. A prime have 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, and 19. So this will be in A prime and B has, mm, I made a mistake here. This is not A prime, this is B prime. So let's find A prime. So A prime will be 10, 12, all the even numbers basically. 14, 16, 18, and 20. That is A prime. Now B is a set. Uh, 10, 15, and 20. So what is A prime union B? It will be the set. It will have 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, 18, and 20. This will be your answer. Now part three. A number R is chosen at random from this set. Find the chances that R is in this set. So what is this set? So let's first find out what is this set. That will be 10, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, and 20. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the chances of it being this set will be 7 over. We have 10 numbers in total. That will be 10. This will be your answer for part 3.
of this uh, question. Now moving on to part B, it says, in a survey, 40 people were asked what they had read that day. Okay, a total of 10 people had read a book, 24 people had read a newspaper, 14 people had read neither a book or newspaper, it will be outside. So, by drawing a Venn diagram or otherwise, find the number of people who had read both a book and a newspaper. So, we have two sets, and they intersect with each other. One is a book, and one is newspaper, and we have this universal set, and we know that 14 people has read nothing of these two it will be outside now we have 10 people has read a book 10 will be here but this is x we don't know so 10 minus x who read only a book 24 minus x will be here who read only newspaper so we have to find the value of x so we know that in total we have 40 people so which means if you add everything plus 14, it needs to equal to 40. So let's simplify, this will go away. This will be what? So what is 10 plus 24 will be 34. 34 plus 14, that will be 48. So 48 minus x will be 40. So x will be eight. So this value here will be eight, which is the number of people who had read both a book and newspaper will be eight. Now, moving on to part two, two of the 10 people who had read a book are selected at random. Work out the chances that they had both read a book and a newspaper. So, it says that from this list of people, we have, we chose two people from this list. As you can see here, this will be the set B. So let's redraw this again. This is the book, this is the newspaper. So, so now we know 8 is they both read a book and newspaper. That is book and newspaper. So here will be 2 and here will be uh, 24 minus 8 will be 16. Okay, outside will be 14. So now we say 2 of the 10 people will be this much. So of this group we select 2 people who had read a book are uh, selected at random work out the chance that they both read a book and newspaper so they both are from this group so the first one what is the chance it will be 8 over 10 and the second one will be 7 over 9 so let's simplify 8 over 10 times 7 over 9 that will be 28 over 45 this will be your answer for part 2 and that is question number six. Moving on to question number seven, part A. The variables x and y are connected by the equation. This is the equation that connects x and y. Now, some corresponding values of x and y are given in the table below. This is a table for x and y. The values are minus three till five. So we have to find this value and this value by replacing x in this equation. So the first one is x equal to minus three. So let's do this, and become 3 plus minus 3 minus 9 divided by 2. That will be minus 4.5. And for this one is 5, so 3 plus 5 minus 25 divided by 2. That will be minus 4.5 as well. Okay, so this is your table for the value of x and y. Now part 2, using a scale of 2 to 1, draw on the x-axis. So on the x, 2 will be 1. That makes sense, right? But the scale, uh, the scale continue, uh, starts from minus 3 to 5, so we have to be careful, and we have to start with minus 3 here. So minus 3, this will be minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So let's draw the line. This will be the x-axis.
on the top this will be the y-axis it says y will be one centimeter to one unit from oh, minus five to five so I did make a mistake so I should have begun at minus five that is okay we can rectify this so let's draw this straight line at, at the point zero at least and we can find where to put minus five this will be the y-axis and this should be the minus five point this will be minus four minus three minus two minus one and zero this will be one two three four and five so this is your y-axis so one centimeter for one unit so we have to bring this up to here for it to make sense so let's ignore this one let's pretend that we did not have this x-axis here so let's bring this to the point here zero Okay, so this will be your x-axis and the points will be from minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so now let's plot the points. So the first one is minus 3, minus 4.5. So minus 3, minus 4.5 will be in between those two. That will be here. Uh, minus 2 minus 1 so minus 2 minus 1 will be here minus 1 1.5 minus 1 will be 1.5 is between 1 and 2 and we have 0 and 3 so 0 and 3 will be here we have 1 and 3.5 1 and 3.5 will be between 3 and 4 and we have 2 and 3 so 2 3 will be here 3 and 1.5 will be between 1 and 2 4 minus 1 4 minus 1 is here and the last one will be 5 minus 4.5 so 5 minus 4.5 will be in between minus 4 and minus 5 okay so now let's try to join all the points together as smoothly as possible and making it going through all the points so it begins here so this will be the curve So try your best to make it go through all the points and make it a smooth curve. That will be this one. And this is this point. Okay, and the last. Okay, here you go. That's it. This is your curve. This between this and that. Now, question part three. By drawing a tangent, Estimate the gradient of the curve at this 3, 1.5. So 3, 1.5 will be this point. So let's draw a tangent and try to find a value for the gradient at this point. So try your best to make it go through two points so you can have a gradient for that line so I will try to go to this point and so I'll try this point and which point and this one I guess so we can try this one so I've tried to make it go to this point and this point so here we have two points the first point is four zero and this is 1, 5. Now let's estimate the gradient will be y1. So y, y2 minus y1. That will be 0 minus 5. Divide by 4 minus 1. That will be minus 5 over 3 will be your gradient. 
So let's find the value, minus 5 divided by 3, that will be minus 1.67. 1.67. Okay, so that will be question part A. Moving on to part four. The points are intersection of the graph and the line. This are the solutions to this find the value of k. So what is this? How do you get this curve? So how do you convert this into this? So let's find out. You have to replace um, your value of k, uh, sorry, y into this. So we'll have k equal to 3 plus x minus x divided by 2. So let's make this, express this in terms of this. So we, have, we first have to multiply 2 everywhere. We have 2k equal to 6 plus 2x minus x squared. Now simplify, we have, um, let's bring this over here, we have 6 minus 2k plus 2x minus x squared equal to 0. So this is the constant. If you compare this to that, you will have these two are the same, so this is this. So, which means these two are equal, which is 6 minus 2k equal to 10. 2k equal to minus 4, k equal to minus 2. The answer is this for part A. Now for part B, by drawing the line, the line will be y equal to minus 2. Find the solutions of the equation. So let's draw the line on the graph, y equal to minus 2. That will be on this point. Let's see where does it cut the graph. So y equal to minus 2 will be this line. Let's find y equal to minus 2. We cut the point here, I mean the curve here, and the curve on these two points. Let's find the values of x. So this one will be minus 2.3. And this will be 4.3. So your answer will be, you have two answers. Solutions will be x equal to minus 2.3 or x equal to 4.3. That will be the two answers for part B. Now moving on to part B, it says, this is a sketch of the graph. This is y equal to p a x. So a is a positive. Now, it passes through two points, this point and this point. Now we say, part one, write down the value of p. So use this point to find the value of p. This is x, this is y. Replacing the equation we have, y is for p a times power zero. That will be p equal to four. Now here, find the value of a. So we know that the equation now is for ax, so you use this equation, 236, that will be what? This is x, this is y, so y will be 36, 4 times a power 2. So a power 2 will be, uh, this divided by 4 will be 9, so a will be square root of 9, which is 3. Now part 3. The line passes to the point, this is x, y, the equation will be p, uh, y equal to p, which is 4, a, which is 3, power x. Find the value of q. So if you know x is equal to 4, find the value of q will be 4 times 3, power 4. So let's do this. So 3 power 4 times 4, that will be 324. And this will be question number 7. Question number 8, so here we have two circles, center O. So this is a big circle and a small circle, center O, same center. Now we have 
um, these are the points and we have C G D so C G D and C F P C F P are, uh, are tangents to the small circle which means this is 90 and this is 90 right now we have lines intersect at X at 90 this will be 90 here 90 here okay angle G O X will be Y this is Y now question about one find the angle G E O so where's angle G E O G E O will be this one so this one needs to be Y divided by 2 and the reason is because angle at circumference is always half the angle at center so let's write this down angle at circumference is half the angle at center which is y that's why it's y divided by 2 now part 2 gx gcx so gcx where is that g c x so this angle so we know that this is tangent to the point g this is the radius this will be 90 so this must be 90 minus y so let's write down angle g c x will be 90 minus y and the reason is because uh, c g c g d as you can see c g d is tangent at point is tangent at the point g so angle o g c is 90 so angle o g c is 90 so from this we find out that angle c can only be 180 minus 90 minus why so the answer will be sorry plus y so the answer must be 90 minus y now for last part angle dab dab will be well dab find this angle so as you observe if this is 90 minus y this angle here will be 2 times 90 minus y which is 180 minus 2y for this big angle C now angle A and angle C are complementary it means that angle A plus angle C equal to 180 so angle A must be 180 minus C which is 180 minus 2y so angle A must be equal to 2y so you will write down this will be 2y because angle DAB and angle DCB are complementary and we know that angle DCB is equal to 180 minus 2C that's how we know that was 2y that's how we know this is 2y that is part one moving on to part b complete the centers triangle e g c is congruent to congruent is same to which triangle let's find out where is e g c is this one this triangle here it is the same as this one it is half half as you can see this is the line of symmetry which means this is E F C is the same as angle H as triangle E G C. So we have to write the triangle E G C is, is congruent to triangle E F C. Now for part C, prove that triangle A D C is similar to triangle O G C. Similar, we have to prove that the angle are the same. So first, let's find out where is triangle A D C. A DC is this big triangle 
and triangle OGC will be this one OGC small one so as you can see we have found that this angle is the same for both because they are the same as you can see big one is this one small one is the same is the same one so they are the common angle for both triangle common angle so we write this down angle a c d so angle a c d equal to angle o c g because they are common in both triangles same angle right and then the other one is angle this is 90 this is also 90 the reason is because this is triangle over diameter this will be 90 so these two are the same so let's write down angle a d c is equal to angle o g c equal to 90 so when we prove two angles are the same the third one will be the same as well by assumption now we can just write they are the similar triangles triangle a d c is similar to triangle o g c so now moving on to question part d what special type of quadrilateral is o a g d so where is o a g d o a g d so this one these two are in the same direction so that will be a trapezium so the answer here will be a trapezium now part e find the ratio of triangle OGC and ADC so OGC is the small one OGC and ADC is this big one as you can see this is the radius of the big circle this is also the radius of the big circle so the side of the big one is two times the side of the small one so we say the ratio is 1 to 2 for the sides but the area we have to square it become 1 to 4 now for this one find the ratio of area OGC and ABCD ABCD is ABCD so as you can see ABCD is twice the size of A dc which means that it will be two times this so it is one to eight that is your ratio for part two and this is everything for question number eight question number nine the ventilation shaft for a tunnel is in the shape of a cylinder now the cylinder has radius this and length this find the volume of cylinder so as you know volume of cylinder is equal to pi r square h so pi is pi r will be 0 0.4 square h will be 15 so let's use our calculator for that one so pi times 0 0.4 square times 15 that will be 7.5398 that will be 7.54 meters cube now part b it says that the diagram shows the cross section of the tunnel this is the cross section of the tunnel now the cross section is a, of a tunnel is a major segment of a circle center o with radius 4.5 and this a o b will be 110 which means this is this will be 360 minus 110 that will be 50 this is 250 this here now part a calculate the area of cross section of this tunnel so as you can see the area is two parts this is part a and this is part b first is area of this sector and area of this triangle this is 4.5 so let's do a a is area of sector which is uh, angle will be 250 divided by 360 times pi r square 4.2 square that will be what so 250 divided by 360 
times pi times 4.5 square. That will be 44.1786. Now for area B, the area of this triangle, we can use formula half times sine of the angle, which is 110, times both sides, which will be 4.5 times 4.5. So half. So half sine of 110 times 4.5 square. That will be 9.514. So you have to add both to find the area of cross section. That will be plus 40 wall plus 1786. That will be 53.693. So 53.7 will be your answer for cross section area. Now moving on to uh, part C, the length of the tunnel is this much, the length. Now we have a car drives through the tunnel at an average speed of this. So this will be 1.75 km. Now, work out the time the car takes to travel through the, through the tunnel, give your answers in minutes and seconds. So, uh, the car travels 45 km in one hour. So how much he will take to travel? 1.7. So 1.75, that will be 1 divided by 45 times 1.75. That will be in hour. So let's do that. 1 divided by 45 times 1.75, that will be 7 over 180 hour. So now I'll give you answers in minutes. You have, you have to times this by 60 for your answers in minutes. So times 60. That will be 2 and 1 third. So that will be 2 minutes and 1 third, one third seconds. So how much is 1 third of a second? So 1 third will be 1 over 3 times 60. That will be 20 seconds. So this will be your answer for part C. Now part D. The diagram shows the positions of the tunnel T, entrance T. So this is T and two road junctions P and Q on the ground. So we have P, Q, and T. Now, it says Q is due north of P, and T is on a bearing of 62 from P. Fair enough? Now we have these two length, and find the bearing of T from Q. So T from Q, find this angle here. So if you want to find this angle, you first have to find this angle. So how do you find this? You have to use the sine rule. So as you can see, this is 62, we say 720 over sine of 62 must be equal to 450 sine of angle Q. So let's first find the angle Q. We have to send this over here. We cross multiply, we will have sine Q equal to 450 sine 62 divided by 720 so sine q equal to what so 450 sine 62 divided by 720 that will be 0 0.5518 so q will be sine inverse of the answer 33.49 degrees so that is 33 0.49 so this one needs to be 180 minus 33.49 this will be what 180 minus answer that will be 146.51 so the bearing of t from q will be 146.5 this will be d and that is question number nine Question number 10, we have a rectangular picture, A, B, C, D, is placed inside of a rectangular frame. So as you can see, this is the picture and this is the frame. Now, the length AB, AB is 3 times its height. So AB will be 3x. Now, the width of the frame is 2 cm. So 2 cm, 2 cm, 2 and 2. Now, part 1. The total area of the picture and the frame is 476. 
So what does it mean? It means that the area of everything here is 476. So how do you find the area of this rectangle? You have to find length times width. So what is this length? It will be 3x plus 2 plus 2. That will be 3x plus 4. And what is the width? It will be x plus 2 plus 2. The x plus 4. So how do you find the area? Takes this times this. So 3x plus 4 times x plus 4. It needs to equal to 476. Expand, we have 3x squared uh, plus 12x plus 4x plus 16 equal to 476. That will be 3x squared plus 16x plus 16 equal to 476. Now if you bring this over here, we will have 3x squared plus 16x plus 16 minus 476 equal to 0. So this will be 3x squared plus 16x minus 460. This is shown as required. Now for this one, solve the equation. So we have a equal to 3, b equal to 16, c equal to minus 460. So let's use the formula x will be equal to minus b which will be 16 plus minus b square minus 4 times a c will be 460 divide by 2a will be 6 so we'll simplify x will be let's use the uh, calculator here what is the inside of the square root we have 16 square minus 4 times 3 times minus 460 that will be 5776 so this will be plus minus the square root of 5776 will be 76 divided by 6 so two values of x x can be first one will be minus 76 plus sorry minus 16 plus 76 divided by 6 will be 10 that's the first value or it can be minus 16 minus 76 divided by 6 will be minus 15 1 over 3 so now x is representing the length and width so it cannot be negative but for now we will write both which is first one is minus 15 1 over 3 and 10 but we know that the correct answer for later on will be this one now moving on to uh, part c it says that find the height and the length of the frame so of the frame the height of the frame is x plus 4 so we use x as 10 10 plus 4 will be 14 for height now for the length it will be 3x plus 4 so 3 times x is 10 plus 4 that will be 34 okay so this is where we found this one so this is the length and this is the height x is 10 14 and this is 34 right now for part d the frame is made of wood the wood is 5 mm thick the mass of 1 centimeter cube of wood is 0 0.7 gram so 1 centimeter cube is equal to 0 0.7 gram so Calculate the mass of wood used in this frame. Okay, so as we know, um, here, what is the mass of wood that we use on this frame? So we first have to find the volume of the frame, so we can find the mass. So the wood is five mm thick. So let's look at the drawing here. So just a frame, the frame is this uh, white part. So let's find the volume of the frame. So we can do the area of the outside minus the inside to find the volume. So let's first find the area of only the frame. So it will be what? This is 14, this is 34, right? 
and this is what 30 and this is 10 what is the area of just a frame it will be this outside will be 34 times 14 minus the inside which is the picture we don't need that will be 30 times 10 so area of only the frame will be 34 times 14 minus 30 times 10 that will be 176 so area of frame is only 176 now you have to times the thickness which is 5 mm so mm to centimeter you have to divide by 10 that will be 0 0.5 centimeter so let's find the volume times 0 0.5 that will be 88 centimeter cube of frame for the volume now it is given to us that one centimeter cube is equal to this so 88 centimeter cube will be equal to 0 0.7 times 88 so let's do that times 0 0.7 that will be 61.6 grams for the mass of just a frame okay and that will be your question number 10 moving on to question 11 so we have a vertical mast xy as you can see here it is positioned on a horizontal ground it is flat on the ground it is standing tall here now it says the mast is supported by four cables attached to at p and to the ground at four points a b c d so this is the mast and it is supported by one two three four cables it's like a pyramid now it says y is the center of a b c d so this is the center of a b c and d it says square which means this the sides are all the same right now for this one we are given that py is 7.5 so this height is 7.5 now part a given that ab is 3.65 so ab will be 3.65 which means this is also 3.65 because it is a square now find the length of ay ay will be this length how do you find this so you can use Pythagoras theorem as you can see let's take this shape out we have a here we have C here we have B and this is a so this is right angle B a C and Y is the midpoint of AC so we know this is 3.65 3.65 let's first find the length of AC so AC square will be equal to 3.65 square plus 3.65 square so AC will be equal to what 3.65 square times 2 that will be this much the square root will be 5.16187 for AC now AY is half of AC so divide by 2, what do we have? It will be 2.5809. Now you answer correct to 3SF, it will be 2.58 meters for AY. So let's say shown as required. Now moving on to part B. Calculate the length of one of the cables used to support the mass. So find the length of this cable so if you know a y so let's take this out a to y and this is the length p y you have to find this length which is a p so we have to find a p this will be 90 and this is we just find out this is a y which is 2.58 and p y is given to us as 7.5 so this will be uh, pretty easy by Pythagoras theorem again we will have AP square equal to 2.58 square plus 7.5 square so AP square will be equal to what 2.58 square plus 7.5 square that will be 62.906 so square root AP will be 7.93 
so this cable will be 7.93 so let's write this down 7.93 meters for the length of the cable used now moving on to part C it says find the angle APB so where is APB as you can see APB is this angle here so let's make a drawing so this is P this is A this is B let's find this angle this is P this is A and this is B this length will be AB 3.65 given to us and AP will be the length of the cable we just found it will be 7.93 7.9 this also will be the same 7.93 so how do you find this angle P we will use the cosine rule which says um, cos of angle P equal to 7.93 square plus 7.93 square minus 3.65 divided by 2 times 7.93 times 7.93 so let's simplify and find out what is this term so 7.93 7 square times 2 minus 3.65 square divided by 2 times 7.93 times 7.93 that will be 0 0.894 so value of P will be cos inverse of the answer which will give you 26.6 degrees this will be angle APB now part D the angle of elevation of X from A is 77 So angle of elevation of x from A, so this point to the point A, it will be 77. So let's make a new drawing. It says if you have the point A, the A is the top point. Sorry, x is the top point, A will be here. x is the top point, and the angle of elevation is 77 from a to x now calculate the height xy find this height xy xy is this big height xy so you know the side ay already ay equals to we have found this here 2.58 And this is right angle how do you find this length you have to use so ka toi so we know the adjacent side we need to find the opposite side we have to use tan so tan of 77 equal to xy divided by this so xy equals to so this times this will be so 2.58 times tan 77 that will be 11.175 that will be 11.2 meters correct to 3SF now for part 2 calculate the angle of elevation of x from the midpoint of A midpoint of AB so let's look at this drawing so what is the midpoint of AB it will be this point here uh, let's call it M let's call this point M and we have to find the angle elevation X right how do we do this so let's draw this drawing here we will have the point M and this is the point X this will be 90 so M this is the point Y we have to find this angle and this we know it is 11.2 and what is this angle we don't know let's call it angle theta and what is this side my my will be as you can see my is half of 3.65 so let's do that 3.65 divided by 2 
that will be 1.825. So now, find this angle, we have to use 10. 10 of theta will be opposite side divided by adjacent. So theta will be tan inverse of this answer, which is equal to, so let's do this. So 11.2 divided by 1.825, tan inverse of the answer will be 80.7 degrees. So 80.7 degrees will be your answer for part two. So that was question number 11. That is the last question of the paper. And as again, thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any question, leave a comment down below. I'll see you soon.